and Yang, welcome to Delightful! In light of the holiday season, myself and a couple other doll YouTubers have collaborated to bring you four festive custom doll videos to watch. So be sure to stick around for more about that. I'll be creating a cute Lolita fashion inspired Christmas reindeer girl. Let's get started. Let's look into the old stock box for a good base doll. This Claudine Wolf from Monster High seems like a good candidate. What does the cat assistant think? She doesn't care. Okay, looks like I already wiped her factory paint off sometime in the past, so let's continue by snipping off the purple in her hair. Luckily, this doll was rooted in a way that makes it easy to section off the purple hair. Cut it as close to the head as you can. Next, to remove her noggin. Since this is going to be a partial reroute, I want to protect the hair she already has by wrapping her in a vinyl bag and dunking her in hot water. Normally, I don't bother and just dunk everything in there, but by keeping the hair dry, we can move right along without waiting. This is a bit trickier because I don't want to remove any brown hair, but I still poke a long pair of needle-nosed pliers in through the neck hole and tug out the remaining bits of purple. Now I'm sure those holes are clean and ready for a new color of hair. I've got a couple browns and blondes in the same color family as her lovely chestnut-colored hair, so I think I'll go with one of these to give her highlights. The tool I'm using is a homemade rerouting tool. All it is is a needle with the eye cut at an angle inserted into a drill chuck piece that I purchased at a hardware store. Slip a couple hairs on the end of the needle and poke those plugs into the head one hole at a time. With her new highlights all filled in, secure the hair from the inside using a flexible glue. I'm using my trusty bottle of Fabri-Tac. This part's kind of awkward because you have to feel around with your thumb and sort of hope you're touching all the plugs in there. We don't want them to fall out. Moving on to her reindeer antlers. I'll be using a sturdy 20-ish gauge wire and a two-part epoxy sculpt. I tried to make my dolls really sturdy because, let's face it, I knock my customs over all the time. So, to make a solid pair of antlers, we want to ground each antler into the head at three points to form a strong armature. Insert the wire in at point one and out through the neck hole. Eyeball about how long you want your antlers to be, keep in mind the length currently inside the head, and double it. Cut the wire at this length. Feed the other end of the wire through point two and out the neck hole as well. Twist these two together and try to flatten the knot so that it will sit nicely on the inside. Now pull that knot inside. Insert a new length of wire into the last point, point three, and create a small knot at the end of that as well. Pull it back inside, clip the wire, and now you can twist all three wires together. I suggest using two pairs of pliers to twist right at the base because you don't want to be putting any stress on the vinyl head itself. Now we can form the armature shape for the epoxy to hold on to. Think of this part like gesture drawing. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should capture the gist of what you're making. I'm referencing photos of reindeer on my off-screen laptop while I form the wire. Yeah, that's good enough. Even-ish. Before we dive into the epoxy stage, mask off the hair as best you can. I'm using some scrap fabric squares and a series of safety pins and rubber bands to protect the head. Mix up equal parts of epoxy A and B and then go to town. I do antlers in two passes. The first pass is just to flush out the armature wire and set the stage. Epoxy cures slowly, especially in cold weather, so if the shape isn't looking right, there's still plenty of time to push around the armature wire. Pass two is for refining the shapes and adding detail. Hey, did you know female reindeer actually do have antlers? Usually for antlered girl characters like this, I feel like I need to make an excuse. You know, like it's a fantasy creature, so it doesn't have to be realistic. But the antlers actually are appropriate this time. Okay, this is going to look pretty weird, but epoxy does cure faster when it's warm. So to try and speed this up, I'm going to find the warmest spot in the house and just let her cook in there for a while. Great. Once it's fully cured, we can paint them. Start off with a dark brown or black and work it into all the crevices. Then come back with your main lighter color and brush it on delicately using the wide side of the brush. 
This technique is called dry brushing and we're using it to accentuate the sculpting and let it do the work for us. To make these antlers a little fancier, I'm adding iridescent copper paint near the tips and also darken the tips towards a black color just to make it look more interesting. Once you're satisfied with the paint job, seal it in using a matte varnish. Half it with water so that the varnish doesn't dry shiny. Paint on a generous two to three coats, especially around the extremities. We don't want any paint shipping off when the cat sent her flying off the shelves. After that's dry, we can move on to her face up. We've got to mask off the face this time. I usually begin with two coats of Mr. Super Clear on the blank doll, but I'm running dangerously low, so let's go straight ahead and dust on some initial pastels. The brand I use is Mungyo Soft Pastels, and they are pigmented enough to actually stick quite well all by themselves, without the sealant. Add some darker red-brown color to her forehead, cheeks and nose, and lips. Now let's seal her. They say MSC doesn't work too well if it's cold, but if I'm honest, I usually just have at it and hope for the best and it tends to work out for me. Maybe it's because I store the can itself inside so that it doesn't get too cold? I don't know, maybe I just luck out. For an entire and complete list of materials, check out my materials video, especially if you're new to the hobby. I also talk about how you're supposed to use MSC. I also list what I use in the video below in the description box if you're curious. So going right in with the black watercolor pencil here, I'm giving her very solid eye lines. I'm referencing images of caribou off-screen and trying to work in attributes of the animal's face into the doll's design. Like the dropped inner corner and the big sweet eyes. I go back and forth from pencils to pastels to shape her eyebrows and pupils and add some early highlighting to the face. To save on sealant, I'm moving right along to acrylic paint. I block in the shape of her pupil and fill in the whites of her eyes with watered down paint. It's better to do several watered down layers to keep things thin and flat, as opposed to one thick layer. Next I'm adding a rather bold design element, a beige ring around her eyes. I've noticed lots of reindeer have a lighter patch of fur around their dark eyes, which really sets them off. Here I'm building up a dark brown color from the black pupil and going with some fancy copper micro glitter to make her eyes sparkle. with some stylized lower lashes painted on in the same color as the beige fur. I also paint on some black lashes. I ended up not liking them. I couldn't get them delicate enough with my current brush skills, and with such a bold design already, she was starting to resemble drag queen makeup, which wasn't what I was going for. So wet down your brush and gently scrape away the most recent layer of paint. Not bad, it'll need a little touching up. For finishing touches, I add a highlight in copper to the cupid's bow of her lips and paint on a few creases for definition. Let's also brush on more copper micro glitter all over her face for some subtle shimmer. And lastly, those tiny little eye shines. I gave her a final spray of Mr. Super Clear and let her dry. Well, I'm really enjoying the shiny paints and glitter, so why not take it a step further? I've been admiring the beautiful customs from Moonlight Jewel Dolls and Mia's Daydreams lately. Both artists' work have that ethereal fantasy quality, and I felt inspired to try something similar. Taking tiny nail art rhinestones and a dab of Elmer's glue, I decorate her forehead and the inner corner of her eye. Have to hold my breath when I put on the rhinestones. There we go. I'll also be gluing on false eyelashes. Trim them to size first, then glue one side of the eyelash to the face. Be patient and let that fully dry before tacking down the other side.
After they're in place and fully dry, I like to paint on a couple layers of glue to the lash bed to ensure that they're hanging on. If the glue you're using doesn't dry clear, just come back on top with some black acrylic afterwards. Feels like I've spent a long time on the face for this one. But the last step is taking Liquitex High Gloss Varnish and painting it on her lips and pupils for a beautiful lifelike shine. Looking good! I'll have to be clever when I style her hair to ensure it weaves around all the stuff on her head and looks presentable. Let's pop her head back on. Gently squeeze the temple and try not to bend the face you just spent hours making. Cute! I want her to have big ringlet curls that are a staple of Lolita fashion. So I've used straws and bobby pins to prepare the hair. Next I pour a glass of hot water and a glass of cold water. I dunk the curls into the hot water first and then into the cold water. I go back and forth a couple times for good measure. The temperature difference will set the curls in place. Dab away excess moisture and set her aside to dry overnight. The next day you can take down her hair and look at all those beautiful ringlets. They look so bouncy and full. I was really feeling good about this. So my husband and I went to lunch, we came back, and... This is what she looked like! I seriously hadn't moved her an inch! The curls fell out so fast! Why? I thought this was nylon hair. I guess I was wrong? I don't know what type of hair it is, but clearly it's not having it, so... I suppose the curls just weren't meant to be. While we worry about what to do with her hair now, let's switch gears and make the outfit. I've gathered all the fabrics I own within the Christmas color palette range. I thought about making her a green ensemble, but the only fabric I have is from a top that I own, and I've already stolen a fair chunk of the garment already, so let's go with red. I've got a handful of homemade patterns I can borrow and modify to create the perfect Christmas dress. First up is the undershirt, so your basic long sleeve button up style top. Next up is the skirt portion. I want the white strip to be the accent panel, so before we sew it into the dress, let's take it aside and have some fun. Using a regular pencil, I freehand some classic Christmas images onto the fabric. Then I take acrylics and go to town, trying to keep the shapes fairly simple and use cell shading for the most part. Keep in mind the seam allowance when you're doing this, by the way. I painted a little close to the edge. I wanted to fill this strip with everything that comes to mind when you think about Christmas. Snowman, ornaments, Christmas cookies, presents, everything. All the reasons I love this holiday. When the accent panel is done, we can continue sewing. I also stitched up a pair of leggings and a petticoat. That's looking pretty festive! She needs some winter boots, don't you think? Using Walker Colors' fantastic shoemaking technique, I wrap the legs with tin foil for protection from the paper mache layer that I'm putting on now. I had to make these on top of the leggings, of course, to ensure that they'd be large enough to fit. Once the casing is dry, delicately cut it out from the back by cutting a line down the center, just like the store-bought Monster High shoes have, and remove it from the leg. You can ditch the tin foil, trim it down to size, and get decorating. I'll be hot gluing fabric onto the cast starting at the toe. And connecting them around to the slits on the back. I glued on ribbon lacing to echo the dress and some fur trim around the top to achieve that classic Santa boot aesthetic. Normally, I would form a heel out of epoxy sculpt, but I'm a bit short on time. So instead, let's cut a wedge from thick craft foam and fill in the shape with carefully applied blobs of hot glue. Paint the heels black and ta-da! Cute Lolita Santa boots. Before we restyle her hair and add finishing touches, let's dress her up to see where we stand. Pretty adorable! 
but this springtastic hair is really ruining it for me. I'm thinking the only way to keep it down while still looking Lolita-esque will be to give her two ponytails. Yeah, with a few more bows, ribbons, and sparkles, our reindeer girl is complete. I think I'll name her Yulia. It's a Russian name, and it kind of sounds like Yule Tide Spirit. <laughs> what is Yule, anyway? She's so ready for Christmas. I bet she's pals with all of Santa's reindeer, too. Hmm, I wonder if Yulia can fly. What do you guys think? A part of me feels like I may have gone a bit overboard with the Lolita outfit and the antlers. Altogether, she does make a very complicated doll. But there's no denying she's bursting at the seams with holiday feels. I'm so glad she's a part of our festive doll family now. But wait, there's even more dolls to be had. That's right, Pop and Atelier, Moonlight Jewel Dolls, and Tamakyu all have their own beautiful Christmas dolls waiting for you over on their channels. I absolutely love how unique and different each artist's work can be under the same theme. Collabs are so fun that way. So make sure to go check out my friends' dolls too. Feel free to like and drop a comment if you enjoyed this festive collaboration, and subscribe if you haven't already. We have a lot of fun here. Happy Holidays! Stay artsy! Annyeong!